Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. I found out my fiance was cheating on Tinder. My fiance, 31, and I, 32, had been engaged for a year. We were so happy and excited to finally tie the knot on December 2020. Or at least I was. It was going to be a beach wedding, and I had already paid down payments for the wedding coordinator, photographers and videographers, chairs, and other wedding supplies. We had invited a small group of friends and family, and everyone told us how excited and happy they were for us. FYI, my fiancé and I live far away from each other. She lived in another country, but we were planning to be together once we were married. I had met her when I went abroad to get my college degree. I had decided to switch careers and go back to school. I decided to get my degree abroad since it would be cheaper and I needed a change of pace or location since I was quite depressed due to my grandma's cancer and her death and basically life. I was able to bounce back and focus on getting my new degree, which would take around a few years. I thought it was a faded meeting. My best friend wanted me to have fun and go on dates, so she created a Tinder profile for me. To be honest, I didn't even know what Tinder was. <laughs> As for her, she had gotten out of a long relationship where her boyfriend had cheated on her multiple times, and her sister created a Tinder profile for her. What attracted me to her was her amazingly beautiful smile. We matched and started dating. I vividly remember her telling me about her past on her first date, and her telling me, I would never cheat. I know how much it hurts and how I can destroy a person. Needless to say, but I took her on her word. After quite a bit of time, I was set to go back home in 2019, but I realized that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with this woman, so I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. She had a blossoming career and had just bought a new house. It was going to be our vacation house since she agreed that she would live with me here. Needless to say, but 2020 was a shit year. I was going to fly to her for vacation in March when COVID-19 canceled everything. We ended up postponing everything and we were stressed from both of our jobs, but after the initial hit of the lockdowns, we were able to cope. We would video call every day for hours, often not hanging up even when one of us was asleep. I was very happy even though COVID-19 ruined our plans. When October came around, it seemed like COVID-19 was starting to get under control, or at least countries had protocols in place where I would be able to go and visit her. Secretly, I booked a flight to go to her. I told her that I was going to go camping with the boys so that it wouldn't seem out of place if we didn't video call for a few days. I arrived and was quarantined for three days and was let go after getting a negative swab result per protocol. I immediately went to her apartment and video called her showing the number on her door. I saw her ecstatic, but it took her a couple of minutes to get to the door, which was unusual. When she opened the door, we hugged and kissed each other, and then I gave her her birthday present. Her phone had been starting to have issues, and I had bought her a phone for her birthday, but could only give it to her now. She transferred her accounts and everything to her new phone and told me that she was super happy that I was now with her. The next morning, she went to her gym for boxing, as she always does, and I was left in the apartment. I was bored and was just playing on my phone. After an hour or so of being bored, I noticed that she had left her new phone on the bed. Somehow, I had that thought at the back of my head. Why did it take her a couple minutes to open the door for me when it normally takes seconds to get to the door from her bed? I checked her phone and saw that she had been messaging one of her friends. What I read shocked me and made me want to vomit. In her messages to her friend, she was buying about how she met this guy on Tinder and had brought him to her new house. She said that they wanted to bless it. And then he came to take her on a second date and they went to a hotel. She was proudly telling her friend what they were doing, positions and whatnot, laughing while describing how she had five orgasms and doing positions with him that she did not like doing with me. Proudly saying that she had to properly teach him positions and that she decided to stop with the guy because he was clingy, not because she was already engaged or that the guy also had a girlfriend. Her friend suggested she keep him as an F buddy and I kid you not, I felt chunks at the back of my throat when I read it. I was dizzy and pretty much hysterical at that point. I screenshotted all her messages to her friend and sent it to me. I called her while she was at the gym and told her that she needed to come home so that we could talk. She saw my screenshots on Messenger and she came home. She came home, tried to apologize, but I was hysterical. I have never screamed at a woman before, but I found myself screaming at her. She told me that she had downloaded Tinder again in June because she felt lonely and that she had gone on dates with other guys, but only had sex with that one guy. She said that it took her a couple of minutes to answer the door because she had forgotten to delete Tinder after it happened. I was in so much pain and shock. I knew we were done as I could no longer trust her, especially if we were living far apart. To my hysteria, I decided to post on Facebook that the wedding was canceled and then tagged her with the screenshots of her messages to her friend. I now realize that was the wrong thing to do, but I don't know. Maybe I wanted to hurt her. 
Maybe I wanted to shame her, or maybe I wanted to show people the exact reason as to why I had to cancel the wedding. It's such a shame, too, since I couldn't get a refund for the down payments for the wedding. I have since forgiven her. I have told her so. I'm not the type of person to hold a grudge or maintain my anger, but God do I miss her. I loved her so much. She was the love of my life. The woman I wanted to wake up next to for the rest of my life. I would never cheat. I know how much it hurts. And yet she still cheated on me. She tried and begged for me to give her a second chance, but since I had posted it on Facebook, my friends and family prevented me from doing so. I really wanted to give her a second chance, and I really do regret posting on Facebook. I have since deleted that post a couple days after it happened. When I met up with her after some time, we hugged it out, and I kissed her on the forehead, like I usually did. I remember telling her to, please be happy. That was the last thing I said to her. One quick comment from Mo Music Man. Your friends are right. You shouldn't ever have anything to do with her again. She's not sorry she cheated, hid it from, and lied by omission. She's sorry she got caught. She planned on screwing other people. She doesn't deserve your love. Delete her contact information, block her on all social media platforms, and find a nice woman who won't so blatantly cheat on you. On to the next story. I got drunk on her anniversary and got beat up. Nothing has ever sent me into a depression as fast or as hard as getting pummeled into the sand at the beach last weekend. It was my last wedding anniversary married to soon-to-be ex-wife. I got really, really drunk and ended up on a beach with strangers. Things seemed to be going fine. I might have flirted with the guy, but I don't remember. I was in a low mood. I don't think I would have started the fight. Honestly, from the first hit, I knew I was going to feel this one for a while. I've been crying a lot of the last few days and wondering if maybe I deserve the whole freaking thing. Maybe I'm just a huge a-hole who really didn't deserve to be loved or respected in the first place. I am now paying, in support of a single child, without alimony, $1,450 a month, which is half of my wage. Soon-to-be ex-wife's rent is $1,450. I'm now paying the rent for her and my ex-best friend, so they can provide a happy place for my daughter. While when she visits me, I take cry breaks every time she reminds me of her mother. I live in a very desirable city, and there's little that's worth renting and no work for a man of my talents. I may also lose my remote Sir Radman job soon, and I have to move from my little mountain city to a major one eight plus hours away where I know no one. I am 40, angry, depressed, and might soon have to move far enough away from my daughter than I ever get to see her. My band broke up last month. I have not played a show for new faces in over a year due to government restrictions. I feel like this, again, is probably the constant stream of negativity that comes from me. I haven't written a song that isn't about betrayal or darkness for over a year. Everything I create is flawed and unworthy. Music feels pointless if I can't share it. So I've put down my gear and I'm thinking about selling my guitars, mics, and PA. I have been in therapy for almost a year. It's not helping. I feel like she just listens to me whine and doesn't hear me. I am terribly lonely. As soon-to-be ex-wife, took most of my friends. I don't know that I will ever trust any of them again, as every time I talk to anyone, she hears some distorted version of what I said, and flips her crap, sending abusive texts, emails, making derogatory Facebook posts. She once rage posted and outed me as bi on her public Facebook feed with a detailed story. I reported it, and hopefully my parents didn't see it. I can't date. I can barely take care of myself. I can't socialize. All I can do is complain and spit venom. I want to be here for my kid, but I feel like her exposure to my depression is scarring her for life. I feel so freaking alone, and I don't know what to do to fix it. People are so socially effed now, after a year of lockdown, that anyone who isn't a perfect fit just kind of gets discarded. I don't see a lot of hope for ever rebuilding a life here, and I don't want to go away from my daughter. Anyway, thanks for giving me somewhere to dump all this. I need to go try and find a lawyer that will return my calls. One well-thought-out comment from This Guy Still Stands. I have been where you are. No hope. Feeling like everyone would be better off without you. Believing you brought this all in yourself, it can get better, but you're going to have to fight for it. You're going to have to drag yourself through this. I know it sucks, but you only have two options. Give up and accept all the things you are feeling right now, or turn this around and become someone that you know improves your daughter's and your friend's and family's life. If you don't think you deserve love, you will self-destruct just to prove that it's true. The past is over. You can't do anything about it, but learn from it and let it go. No one deserves to be cheated on. You didn't either. Even if you weren't the perfect partner, there are more mature, less destructive ways to handle conflict in relationships 
than lying and cheating. You haven't lost your job yet, so there's no point in worrying about it. Do your research in case you do, but don't suffer through it, once if it doesn't happen and twice if it does. Even if you do have to move, starting over can be an opportunity if you let it. My kids lived seven hours from me, and I still saw them. Not as often as I wanted, but I made sure that I took the time to focus on them while they were with me. I'm a musician too. Write for yourself to release that negativity. Use music to work through what you're feeling. Don't share if you don't want to. Burn it if that helps. Just keep playing and let your feelings flow. Find a new therapist. Tell your current therapist how you're feeling if you see them again before you found a new one. Talk to your doctor about depression and stop drinking. Alcohol will only make it worse. And stop talking to your betrayer. Cut contact with her as much as possible. Tell your friends she doesn't need to know your business and you don't need to know hers. If they can't respect that, it's better to be alone than to have a bunch of fake friends waiting to stab you in the back when you're not looking. Don't worry about dating. You have a lot of healing to do first. You have to force yourself to take care of yourself. You have to do it for yourself. You have to do it for your daughter. I don't even know you, but I can promise you, her life would not be better without you in it. Good luck, man. I'm rooting for you.